the story of Joshua as he's commissioned to lead the Israelites into the promised land. As I look at his life, I see a man who has loved and trusted God, a man who has been obedient, a man who has had faith in God when things didn't look so good. He was one of the 12 spies that was sent out to look out and spy out the promised land and come back and report to the people. And when he and Caleb came back, they say, hey, the land is flowing with milk and honey and we can go take it. He wasn't thinking in terms of his own power. He wasn't thinking in terms of his own might, but he was thinking in terms of the power and the might of his God. So when he looked at the situation, he didn't see a land that was unconquerable. He saw a land that his God was handing to him. And he came back with a favorable report. Now those other people who had uh, went out to spy out the land, they came back and they talked about how big the people were. They talked about how fortified the cities were. And then they wasn't quite sure they'd be able to possess the promised land. And in their doubt, they caused the other people to have doubt. And as the other people had doubt, they didn't trust in the Lord. They didn't obey the Lord. And those people, even though when they prayed, Lord, save us from this slavery in Egypt. The Lord heard them because he had promised Abraham that I will take care of your seed. And when they called upon him to be freed from slavery, the Lord freed them and he was ready to take them to the promised land. And what held them back? It was their doubt and their disobedience that kept them from being able to enter the promised land. Those people who God rescued from Egypt spent 40 years in the wilderness because of their lack of faith, for their lack of courage, their lack of trust in God. And the promised land is only for those who trust and obey God. When we look at the Israelites going into the promised land, we look at us, the New Testament Christians, as we head for salvation. Salvation is also a promise of God. Whosoever believe shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever will put their trust in me. Whosoever is willing to... Whosoever is willing to trust Christ completely shall not perish but shall have everlasting life shall be able to enter the promised land based on faith and that faith which leads to courage to do the will of God we look at Joshua he trusted God he was Moses' aide. He followed Moses around and he watched what Moses did. When Moses went up on the mountain to get the commandments, Joshua went with him. He watched Moses lead. He watched Moses pray for the people when the people were rebellious. And he had a heart for God. And God chose him to be Moses' predecessor, to follow up. And to continue to lead the people into the promised land. But Joshua understood this. He was not leading the people based on his skills. Not based on his knowledge. Not based on his understanding. But on his following the directions of God. And the scripture talks to him. Say, after Moses' death. The Lord... The Lord, God, spoke to Moses' assistant, and his name was Joshua, the son of Nun. And he said to him, my disciple is dead. You are the new leader. 
He was appointed by God. He was called by God to do what God needed to have done. He was gifted by God. He had been in training under Moses for all these years, and he was ready, and God called him out. He said, lead my people across the Jordan River into the promised land. You've been with Moses. You've been gifted. You've come to know me. And now I need you to lead this people. This people didn't change. These ain't the same people that came out of Egypt. The people who came out of Egypt was running. They were in fear for their life. The Pharaoh was behind them and the Red Sea was in front of them. And they were afraid. And they had called on the Lord. But they didn't know the Lord. They didn't trust the Lord. They were murmuring and they were grumbling. But the Lord had promised Abraham. And even though they had shortcomings, because the Lord has promised Abraham, he had favor with them. We have a promise in Jesus. The Lord has promised that whosoever believeth shall not perish. And in that promise, if we seek to get across into the promised land, it will not be by our power, it will be not be by our might, but it will be by the Spirit of God that we are moved from where we are to where God wants us to be. And the day that we stop fighting to have our way, to do what's right, to do what makes us feel good. The day when we decide to say that I will obey God no matter what the cost, no matter what I got to give up, no matter how uncomfortable this is going to make me feel because I understand where blessings come from. And they come from those who are obedient. Those who obey and trust God are under his protection. Oh, you want to see a miracle? Wait. We have problems. Some of us this morning are sick. We have illnesses that are within us, and yet we serve the great physician. And instead of being able to find joy, we concentrate and focus on our pain. But that pain may be your ministry today. It may be your opportunity to witness. It may be your chance to tell somebody about how Jesus is seeing you through the complicated situation that you're going through. My finances are a little short. I don't know how I'm going to make it this month. But if you put your trust in Jesus, the great provider, he will get you across the Jordan to the promised land. Now, we don't necessarily know how he's going to do that. But our job ain't to know how. Because I think God really likes it when you don't know how. He's going to do something. He told Abraham, he said, hey, I want you to get up and I want you to go to a place where I'm going to show you as you go, but I'm not going to tell you before you get there. And Abraham started packing his bags. Now, y'all know if somebody tells us to get up and go somewhere like that, we go, well, okay, Lord, well, will we be in the Sheraton or the Marriott? Uh, well, well. <laughs> Am I flying first class? We got a lot of questions we want to have answered before we start packing. But when God say get up and go, he expects you to get up and go. He don't ask you, how am I going to pay for my ticket? You know, because when you move out in faith, you're going to find that ticket paid for. It ain't your call. God say, I provide for everything I call my people to do. I don't just push you out there and leave. If you got to get across the promised land, I'm going to take your cross. You can't go by yourself. You're going to be needing me. Joshua understood this. And as being able to understand this allows him to be a leader. He says to him, get ready to cross the Jordan land. Get ready to cross the Jordan into a land that I will give you. Not that you got to go work and earn and come up with some kind of scheme and some kind of plan. He said, you just get ready to go to a place where I'm going to show you. That's what he told Abraham. I'm, and I'll show you where you're going. You just step out in faith. Get ready to cross the Jordan. The Jordan is a raging river. The Jordan is overflowing its banks. The Jordan is death. If you jump in the Jordan, you're going to die. It's going to sweep you down the river. You're going to bump your head on the rocks. It's going to pull you down. But if the Lord take you across the Jordan, 